In this video, we will discuss about the harness design process. So, I said at the beginning of this section that electrical harnesses are not just wirings like uh, they are called many times or looms. Probably many engineers working in the automotive industry that are not in the electrical harness design, they might look at harnesses like uh, just some wires, like uh, it's not a big deal. But in reality, those are a little more difficult to design. Because the behavior of a bundle of wires, it's basically unpredictable and uh, there isn't any software that will predict exactly how a bundle of wire is going to sit in 3D. So as a harness design engineer, you need a lot of experience to be able to design harnesses perfect from the first try. And also pay attention to integration inside the vehicle because an electrical harness has to be like every other mechanical part where we can modify it easily. And you can unmount it easily, you can mount it easily back, you can service it and so on. So we said that electrical harnesses are being built by people in harness manufacturing plants on those big boards and uh, held together with tools that they have in the harness manufacturing plants. You can see them around here, around here and even here. And many harness manufacturing plants, they have like this carousel with boards that uh, it's slowly moving. So the operators, they need to mount those wires until the board moves away from their post. Here we can see closely various tools that are being used on the board to hold the harness and the connectors. And this is the first thing that gives us limitations because there is a minimum distance that you can mount those two fixings next to each other. So you cannot mount them very close to each other. So you can imagine that the branches inside the 3D harness there is a minimum distance that you might have between them and there is a minimum distance between a branch and the connector and there is also a minimum number of branches that you can have from a point so we are going to discuss about that so holders and part numbers in the plm software that you use or that the company uses team center or windchill so the company so if the company doesn't have a plm software and all katia files are stored on the hard drive in folders basically that's your plm sof software it's windows and the folders that uh, you need to organize and in the plm software you learn to make the placeholders for each type of katia v5 object so you'll have placeholders for products for parts and uh, you will need to do the structure there exactly like you have it in katia and you'll have some extra placeholders for other things. So if you do a team center training or a windshield training, you will uh, immediately learn how to use those. Then you copy and carry over. Then you copy any carryover cut data inside the product. So if you have a product that has a few parts or a few assemblies that are similar and they will not change for the new objects, you design and position retainers where it's possible. Everywhere you have holes and uh, retainers, you start to position those. And from this point, you identify and note down all design requirements of violations. Because when you start to design the 3D bundles and position connectors and retainers, you will start to see if there are any issues with uh, designing that harness. If uh, maybe mechanical parts have been modified and you need to find a new route or a new solution or you have something clashing, can you highlight the high impact issues to the seam, to the teams as soon as possible? So if you have a high impact issue, the circuit design team and with the circuit diagrams and make sure that everything is frozen there and everything is uh, finished and that all those circuits have been inserted in uh, your harness. All bundle routes have been designed in 3D. All retainers have been installed in 3D. So you need to have all the retainers in place for your harness. All connectors have been installed in 3D. All issues have been solved or highlighted to the teams. All deviations from rules have been solved or signed yet more when you work with a manufacturing plant. The minimum distance between branching points. So you have here a branch point. We have here another branch point. Those have to be supported by tools that uh, we've seen in the pictures. So that minimum distance project checkpoints that are usually used in uh, mass production automotive. So those are the checkpoints that the automotive manufacturer uses for the vehicle and automatically you're going to have to submit to this to those checkpoints so this is what everybody has to respect it doesn't matter if it's mechanical engine or harness everybody has to respect this so when they design for a new vehicle design they also do what uh, we do in harness design copy old files that will be reused give them new part numbers and names create new files for parts that will be new create design and managing teams so new teams will be created 
Secondary checkpoints will take place from virtual building by the manufacturing departments. So manufacturing department, they might do some extra checkpoints, but they will do them only in a 3D CAD. So it's not going to be done in reality. And then the first checkpoint, it's usually design engineer. So before M1, you might have a VB, which is called a virtual build in a 3D. So they, everybody sits together in a meeting, in a big meeting room. And uh, they look how everything fits, how everything will be mounted and what issues are around there. So this includes everything from mechanical stuff to harness to piping, everything. So CAD files are created and populated where they do the M1. You see here, they have those guys, it says pilot build. So you see this is not an assembly line, there are just some cranes and you have uh, vehicles. And those guys, they mount stuff by hand, slowly moves forward by itself, the line. You'll have a lot of numbers indicating posts. Everything is very clean, very tidy. You have a lot of signs everywhere, so you shall not pass here. You have a big label that uh, gives, so operators look on the label. And those are the first thing that you need to know because you want to know immediately when the project that you're working on has to be ready. And if you're going to do that, I guarantee you that uh, your bosses colleagues are going to appreciate you immediately because uh, they will think that you are an engineer that uh, they can rely on. So if you want to understand better, watch this video again, take notes. I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.